For as the soil makes the sprout come in up in a garden and causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations. First Thessalonians five sixteen through twenty four. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Matthew 11, two through 11. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone? Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. Then this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Questions for reflection. Even when describing joy, the biblical writers gloss over evil and suffering. The selected passages acknowledge a wide range of dark realities and conditions among them. Tears, imprisonment, every kind of evil, weeping, ashes, blindness, mourning, ruins, lameness, grief, devastations, deafness, poverty, disgrace, leprosy, despair, robbery, death, captivity, and wrongdoing. Such unwelcome intrusions in our lives as interruptions and the impact, they can stir up fear and anxiety. They steal our sleep and pickpocket our joy. They can cause us to question God, even turn away from God. What are some words or phrases that come closest to describing a recent interruption you've experienced or one you're experiencing now? How has this interruption affected you? For example, consider the emotional, physical, relational, and financial consequences. Some characterize Christmas as a season of interruptions. In what ways, if any, does this holiday season complicate or intensify the effect of your interruptions? In what ways, if any, do the holidays lighten your burden? How would you describe your awareness and experience of God throughout this season? For example, does God seem especially close or distant? Do you find yourself turning to God or away from him? Or do you vacillate? Our Advent prayer, come Lord Jesus, be my joy. Amen. All right. I will. Excuse me, I have to remember where I'm at here. Right. At this time, I'll call to worship. Okay. Thank you. It is good to praise you, Lord, 
to sing praises to God Most High. It is good to praise you with the ten-stringed lyre and with the soft-sounding harp. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to worship you and praise you. Dear Lord, uh, there's so much hurt, and so much brokenness. Dear Lord, so much illness. Yet, you tell us to come to you. The one that can do all things. Just minister to each and every heart. We pray for healing. Dear Lord, we also pray that you would just draw each person to you. As we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Dear Lord, I want to lift up those that have lost loved ones. Minister to them. I lift up those that aren't able to meet, to be with loved ones because of restrictions and not able to be either in a hospital or rest homes. Dear Lord, minister to them. We thank you again that you're always there. We thank you again that you uh, always love us. Dear Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for what Jesus has done for each and every one. And I pray that each and every one would receive that grace. And dear Lord, know that they are forgiven. And dear Lord, to live in it. Dear Lord, that we can be overcomers. Also, thank you again for this opportunity as we come before you today and pray the Lord's Prayer again. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us the trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. By thy kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth. Amen. Now at this time, we'll have the hymn, Joy to the World. And you'll find that on 246 or on the screen. Enjoy the video.
be seated. Being the second Sunday, uh, this month is for moments of mission. It's for the food bank, and uh, you can put that your offering uh, for the food bank uh, either in the front or over on the side. And I think there may be some baskets there. And uh, anyway, I just want to let you know that because it is a wonderful mission, and it is it is needed. And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to participate that. And I, I thank uh, the Lord for the mission team and always praying and looking for different ways to, to be able to help and make a difference. And what a blessing that is. Now at this time, we'll have the young disciples and you can stay where you're at and the ushers will bring you a, a treat uh, after I'm done. But I'll go ahead and sit down here. Today we'll be looking at the Magi or the wise men. And uh, when we think about that, you know, they came between 800 and 900 miles on camel. And that would have been at least three months just to travel to Jerusalem. Do any of you like to travel in the car? I, I never was that big in traveling in the car. And... Uh, but this is way before that, and that would have been three months. That would have been a long, long time, and that was only to get there, and then they had to go back. But the reason they went was because God had sent a sign, and they, the Magi, they were astrologers. They studied astronomy, and they also knew about God's Word because of Daniel would have been in that area over 600 years years ago. And they were in a country where the emperor was, he was very mean, and uh, he was very prideful, and actually the next king they met was the very, very same way. King Herod was very prideful, uh, and uh, he did terrible things to people. But they were looking to where they could find hope. This, the Messiah, the the anointed one, the new king was born, and so they knew to go to Jerusalem. So they went there because of sign, but because of scripture, they found out where he would be born, and that was in Bethlehem, only a few hours away. And they wanted to go see so they could worship the king. Now Herod, he didn't even call him the king, and he was very, very jealous. And he said, well, when you find him, let me know. Because you see, he wanted to get rid of him because he didn't want anyone to take his place. And of course, God came to the Magi again in a dream and told them to go home another way. You see, God speaks to us in many different ways. He can speak through us through circumstances. He can speak through us through signs. And of course, he uses his word to reveal to us what he desires. And his word is, is the Bible, and many of you know that. And many of you have had your parents read to you, and that is such a blessing when they read to you from God's word. So at this time, let us go to Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you how you speak to us. It can be through the sun, it can be through the stars, it can be through snow, rain, it can be through many things. And we thank you how your word speaks to us and reveals how much you love us and care for us. So dear Lord, just bless these children and allow them to feel your presence and love. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
infant holy, infant lonely. You'll find that on the hymn number 229 or up on the screen. this time we'll have prayer for our offering. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity, dear Lord, to join you in ministry. We ask that you'd bless this offering that we're receiving for the church and also for the food bank. Dear Lord, we thank you knowing that this offering will be utilized to help others. It will be utilized to share the gospel. Not only here in Ellsworth, but throughout the world. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity. Also, gracious God, not only to pray for this offering, that it would further your kingdom, but also pray for each and every one that is able to give. But not only financially, but of time, service, prayer, and presence. Minister to each and every heart. We thank you and praise you again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star as it is rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they had set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Jordan. I just love to hear his voice. I don't know. Maybe when I grow up, I'll have a voice like that. I'm already getting taller. I'm starting to grow through my hair. Okay. I don't think that'll happen. Uh, today, we'll be looking at how God guides the wise. And at this time, would you please bow your head with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you. How you guide us as you send signs and your word to direct us. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd give me the words today, that they'd be your words and not mine. That we'd have a greater understanding of your words for our lives. Interpretation and application. We thank you again. As I see how you break through. And reveal to us. And draw us near. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus precious name. Amen. You know God guides the wise. And first I want to look at. Holiday time is travel time. Now, maybe not so much this year. Things have changed in 2020, and I don't have to go very deep in that. You all know that. But when I reflect and look at my life, uh, how holiday time was travel time. Ever since the Magi packed their bags for Bethlehem, the birth of Jesus has caused people to hit the road. Our Christmas trips have a lot in common with the wise men. We don't use camels. And it doesn't take us 90 days to get there like it did for the wise men, the Magi, to get to Bethlehem. And we don't keep an eye out for the starlights, but flashing lights of highway patrol, we watch them every turn or on every curve. And we don't ride in a Spice Road caravan, but six hours in a minivan with four kids might make the wise men thankful for animals. And it's not always a ho, 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 high, high highway. It's extended time in the car reveals our human frailties. You know, and dad refusing to stop. They hearken back to the examples of the forefathers. Did the pioneers spend the night at the Holiday Inn Express? Did Lewis and Clark ask for directions? Did Joseph allow Mary to stroll through a souvenir shop on the way to Bethlehem? By no means. Men drive as if they're biblically mandated to travel far and fast. Stopping only for gas. And children. Road trips do to kids what a full moon does for the wolf man. If one child says, I like that song on the radio, you might expect the other to say, that's nice. That's nice. It won't happen. It will not happen. Instead, the other child will reply, it stinks and so does your feet. There is also the issue of JBA, 
That's J-B-A, juvenile bladder activity. A child can go weeks without going to the bathroom at home, but once on the road, the kid starts leaking like secrets in Washington. I mean, I don't know if you've had the opportunity, but you may go through a town that takes 20 to 30 minutes. And you go by convenience store and convenience store and, and maybe fast food places and they don't say a word. And then you get a mile and a half out of town. I gotta go to the restroom. Has anyone ever had that? I guess I'm the only one. But I don't think so. The best advice for traveling with young children is to be thankful they're not teenagers. Teens are embarrassed by what their parents say, by what they think, by what they wear, by what they eat and sing. So for their sakes, if you want to see your future grandchildren, don't smile at a waiter or a waitress, don't breathe, don't sing with the windows down or up. Christmas and travel. The first has a way of prompting the second and has done so ever since the delegation from the distant land came searching for Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We see that in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. You know, we need direction, and God gives it. We need direction, and God gives it. Matthew loved the Magi. He gave the story more inches of text than he gave the narrative of the birth of Jesus. He never mentioned the shepherds. He never mentioned the manger. But he didn't want us to miss the star and the seekers. Let me say that again. Matthew did not want us to meet miss the star or the seekers. It's easy to see why. The story is our story. We're all travelers, we're all sojourners. In order to find Jesus, every one of us needs direction. God gives it. The story of the wise men show us how. We have seen the star in the east and have come to worship him. In verse 2, of Matthew chapter 2. God uses the natural world to get our attention. Earth and stars. From the first missionary society, the heavens declare the glory of God. From Psalm 19, 1. As Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, the basic reality of God is a plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is by taking a long and a thoughtful look at what God has created. People have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see, eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of the divine begging. From Romans chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, from the message. God led the wise men to Jerusalem with the star, but to lead them to Jesus, he used something else. As we see, he used the scripture. When they talked to Herod, Herod called the priest and the scribes to find out exactly where the Messiah would be born. The star was enough to lead the Magi to Jerusalem, but it took the scripture to lead them to Jesus. People see signs of God every day. Sunsets that will steal your breath. Newborns that will bring tears to your eyes. Migrating geese that stir a smile. But do all who see these signs draw near to God? The answer is no. The answer is no. Many are content simply to see signs. They do not realize that the riches of God are intended to turn us towards Him. Perhaps you do not understand that God is, a, is kind to you, so you will 
change your hearts and lives. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The wise men, however, understood the purpose of the sign. They followed it to Jerusalem, where they heard about the Scripture. The prophecy told them where to find Christ. It is interesting to note that the star reappeared after they learned about the prophecy. And the star came and stood shining right over the place where the child was in Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. Sign and word worked together to bring the wise men to Jesus. The ultimate aim of God's message, both miraculous and written, is to shed the light of heaven on Jesus. They were called by a sign, instructed by Scripture, and directed home by God through that dream. And they were obedient. Humility. Most of the players in the Christmas drama inspire us with their faith. Men of great courage. Joseph, who was obedient. The shepherds, who came quickly and worshipped willingly. The magi, the wise men, who traveled far and gave generously. Most behaved like heroes. Most behaved with humility. But there was one who played the role of a villain, and that is Herod. We see in Matthew chapter 2, verses 7 through 8, and also 16 through 18, when he realized that the Magi did not come back to him to tell them about the newborn king. You see, Herod and the Magi shared the same chapter, but they didn't share the same heart. The wise men traveled a great distance to see Jesus, and Herod refused to even leave his own city. The wise men presented their treasures to honor the child, and Herod attempted to kill him. Pride. Herod was hooked on his own importance. His arrogance blinded the view of Christ. His ego was threatened the moment he heard the, the Magi's question, where is he that has been born king of Jews? In verse 2. Herod was disturbed by that question, it tells us in verse 3. And then he told them to go search for the young child. You notice he didn't say, Search for the young king. He said, no, go search for the young child. A reoccurring message of Scripture is that God loves the humble heart. God loves the humble heart. Make, wise, make the wiser choice. The path marked by pride will lead you over a cliff. The path marked with humility will take you to the manger of the Messiah. Let me say that again. The path marked of humility will take you to the manger of the Messiah. God uses every possible way to communicate with you. The wonders of nature call to you. The prophecy of Scripture speaks to you. And God Himself reaches out to you. He wants to help you find your way home. Now I want us to look at the last point of breaking through. Many years ago I watched the television adaptation of the drama The Miracle Worker. Actually I saw this 50 years ago. It was a compelling story of two females with great resolve. The story was of Helen Keller and Ann Sullivan. You see, Helen Keller was born in 1880, and she was not yet two years old when she contracted an illness that left her blind, deaf, and mute. When Helen was seven years old, Annie Sullivan, a young, partially blind teacher, came to the Keller's home in Alabama to serve as Helen's teacher. 
it wasn't working very well at all, and Helen's own brother, James, tried to convince Annie to quit and just go ahead and go back home. It wasn't working, and it wouldn't work. But she wouldn't consider it. Helen was stubborn as her teacher. It was a battle of the wills, if you would. But I remember that scene where Annie took her out to the yard and there was a water pump. And she started pumping it. And water was coming out. And then she would take Helen's hand and put it under the water. And then the water started flowing on it. And then she'd start spelling on her hand, water, water, water. And finally, Helen received this message. And then she took her hand and put it on her teacher's face and Anne Sullivan started spelling out water, water, and shaking her head, yes, water. And then all of a sudden, Helen was so excited, she took Annie's hand and started leading her all over the yard and put her hand on the porch and then Annie would spell it to her and then to a tree and all over the yard and then things took off. It was that breakthrough. It was that breakthrough. Christmas celebrates a similar moment for us. God breaks through our world. In a feeding stall of all places. He will not leave us in the dark. God is the pursuer. God is the teacher. God won't sit back while we miss out. God enters our world. He sends signals. He sends message. He spells out hope. He spells out life. And this Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, He spells out joy. Now I know it's kind of difficult in the season that we're living in with COVID-19. But I want you to know that it is only going to be for a little while. Even though it's been very, very difficult. The Lord came to set us free. The Lord came to let you know that you are loved. That you are forgiven. And even in difficult times, the Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. And during this time, remember the joy that we have. And joy isn't because of circumstances. But joy is something that comes from the Lord. When I look at... When I look at peace. When I look at love. When I look at joy. When I look at hope, that is all found in Jesus. It is all found in Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you and praise you that you come, that you still direct, that you still guide, just as you guided the, the Magi through signs, and through your word. Dear Lord, I thank you and praise you that we have your living word and that we would turn to it, that we would follow it just as the Magi did. They had signs, they had your word, and then also you spoke to them and they were obedient. So, dear Lord, just minister to each one of our hearts. I thank you again what we have in you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Now, at this time, if you're comfortable standing, I'm going to ask for you to stand. As we sing the hymn, there is a song in the air that is found in, in the hymnal number 249 or on the screen.
Gracious God, we thank you. How you guide us, how you direct us. Because you love us and you want the best for us. Dear Lord, I pray that we would share this with others. About your signs, about your wonders, about your word. And what we have in you. A God that loves us so much that came in into our world to save us. So gracious God, I just send them out in your power. Power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you.